Hi, welcome to Create, Dream and Paint. I'm Erin. Today we're learning about color value. The videos have age guidelines, but just so you know, these are only guidelines. They're just a suggestion. So do one or you can do them both. Today we need our paint supplies, a pencil, eraser. Let's get started. So today we're learning about color value. Color value is the lightness and darkness of a color. So we're going to try, I'm going to explain it while using yellow. So if we see yellow right out of the tube or the bottle, it's going to be really, really dark. That's a dark yellow. So you can use any color. You can make black into like gray and white, all, or you could use blue or purple to do this, but I'm choosing yellow. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna actually get another lid here to mix on, sometimes I do that, is I will add my yellow. And on, I'm gonna wash off my brush so I don't get all that yellow and the white so I can use it later. And it's all about the amount of white you add to it. So I'm just gonna take a little bit of yellow. Do you see how that is so much lighter? But there's different values of that yellow. There's in between the bright and the light yellow. So this one's gonna be the light yellow. Do you see the difference? I want you to try it with one of the colors you have. Doesn't matter what color it is, but I want you to see if you can make that color lighter using white. So I have the lighter yellow and I could even go lighter from there. I could add even more white, but I kind of want to mix some of my yellow with the lighter yellow. And you know what happens? I get the, shape, the value in between. So that is how you get a color value. So in the next couple minutes, I'm gonna be back with our project for today. And it's all gonna be based on color value. See you in a minute. So today we're talking about color value and now we're on to the drawing for our color value painting. So today we're going to do two cats. If you do not like cats, you can always change the face to a dog with big dog ears. But I do like cats. I'm not allowed to have any. I have dogs, but my family is allergic to cats, so I'll go with the drawing. Okay, so let's do this. So the first shape we're going to do, because remember last time we talked about line and shape. So don't get nervous because everything we're doing here are just lines and shapes. You can stop the video at any time to come back and try again if it doesn't work. So let's start with our first cat. It's kind of like a curved diamond. I know that's probably not a real shape, but that is how I'm explaining it. It's like a football. That's what it is. See how I'm working my shape? You have to work it into the perfect place so feel like you can erase. And you'll notice today I'm not working on a canvas. I am working on paper. You can work on paper, you can work on cardboard, you can work on canvas, you can work on all sorts of things. So all I do is if I'm working on paper, I put the paper down with some painter's tape so it doesn't rip the edges, but it keeps it all nice and still like a canvas would be. So there's the football. And for the cat, I have here a long neck going into the body. Let's try on the other side. A long neck into the body. So on my cat, I want to have pointy ears. So I'm gonna make two triangles. Do you see how drawing can be actually quite easy and not difficult? 
We just overthink these details when really we just need to look and look and see what shape it is. So what is our cat missing? Our cat is missing a tail. And some cats have fluffy tails, but this one doesn't. Okay. I'm going to make the cat's eyes just circles. Cat's nose, that's a triangle. And then I am going to draw my cat a collar. But I want you to look how I'm doing the collar. It's like I'm wrapping a circle around the kitty's necks. So, and then we bring that down that line and this line we come all the way around. Do you see how then it wraps around? It doesn't just stop. So that's the great thing about drawing shapes is we can start to see how things actually look. So what I'm going to do now is I want my cat to have spots. This cat. So I'm going to go in and I'm going to draw my cat's spots. Kind of like a Dalmatian cat. <laughs> that would be crazy, wouldn't it? If you have a cat or a dog, you should put up a picture in our Facebook group. And if you haven't joined yet, just ask your parents if they registered or if they know about it so we can share our artwork and we can share things about ourselves, like if we have a cat at home or a dog. Okay, so there we go. There's our first cat. So on to the second cat. So I want to make my second cat, like this one, smaller with stripes. So let's try that. So remember, remember I said a curved diamond? That doesn't make sense, but how about the shape of a football? This is just a little cat. Maybe a mom with her kitten. And then remember, long neck into a body. And I want you to see. See how the body is coming over the other one? This is okay. That's why we have an eraser. Kind of helps us lay things out when we do one thing at a time. A long neck in a body. Remember the circle. You can actually even draw the circle completely and just erase the one line and see how you have a perfect collar. Okay. So remember, okay, where are we here? I need to put the neck in and the collar. And what, remember we did triangles. I'm gonna do big triangles for this one's ears maybe one bigger triangle than the other. Remember, things don't have to look perfect. We're going to do the eyes, which are two little circles or ovals. We're going to do triangle nose. I kind of like this cat. My friend has Devon Rex cats, and this is what they look like with the big ears. Then I'm gonna go in and do the stripes. So you might do stripes differently where they're like triangles everywhere, or you could do spots on this one too. But this is where we're going to learn our color value when we start to paint. Perfect. Okay, so I'm gonna give you an option if you wanna put, I want this to be outside. So if you wanted it to be inside, you could just draw a window frame or if you wanted a cat, the cats to be on a couch, you could just draw a couch, but I want them to be outside. And like I was telling you last week, I kind of missed the sun, so I'm gonna draw sun, but you can draw the moon if you want your cats out at night, and then you can paint your background black. So you have lots of options. Just because I'm doing something does not mean you have to do it. You can change anything in your picture. That's what makes you an artist. 
So I'm gonna go and do my rays of my sun. And I want you to know you don't have to do it the same. Because I like to see all sorts of different pictures and I'm so happy that you guys sent me pictures of what you're doing. It made me so happy. I looked through them all week. I love to teach art, especially to kids. You know what? You guys have the most creativity. Us as adults sometimes forget that. And that's not always a good thing. So I think this is how I want it to look. I'm not going to so much put clouds in this one because I'm going to do more designs with my color values. You see how I have my purple cat? I've lightened this purple to put in the stripes, but I also just go in and I make just random doodles in the sky. Sometimes that's a lot of fun. Okay, so I will be back in just a moment and we're going to start to paint. So we're back to paint. But the one thing I did not realize, which you probably did, is I forgot to give this cat a tail. So I gave him actually a big fluffy tail. I figured it would be different than this one. And I just am gonna put in the stripes. It kinda reminds me of squirrel's tail. Where I live, there's lots of trees. I know I told you that last time, but we have squirrels everywhere, everywhere. They've even been known to chase people around here. So we're going to start with my first cat and I'm going to do it a little bit different, but I want you to know you guys can do any colors, like try something new. What's the worst thing like I told you that could happen is you just have to paint over it and try it again. So maybe you could do green or blue or purple or pink or purple like these ones, but I'm going to do yellow. I kind of feel like yellow and orange. I feel like bright colors today. Yellow and blue are my favorite colors. I love them. So I'm just trying to think, you know what? We're going to start. I'm going to start with orange and I'm going to take some white. Remember how we're talking about color values today. I need my water that's over here. Okay. So I'm going to start off like this cat and I am going to make the body a dark color and then I'm going to change the colors, the color value of the main color to the spots. So let's give that a go. And you never do this wrong. If all of a sudden you're like, I want the spots to be a different color, that's what you do. But what I'm trying to do is just open up the idea that color is changeable. I want to give you the tools. There's lots of different things we're going to talk about in the next little bit, like color temperature. We're talking about value today. Remember, things don't have to be perfect. And we're going to go in and do the details later. So if all of a sudden you realize you paint over top of the eyes or you paint over top of the nose, that's okay. Just do it and then come back later with another color and put in those details. You can actually see sometimes your pencil marks through, which is kind of nice. Sometimes I do a second coat, but sometimes I like the fact, see, I'm gonna do that. We're just gonna do it. We're gonna go through and I can see the pencil marks. So I'm just gonna go right over top. I wanna show you there's lots of different options. And if all of a sudden you're working on your painting and something goes wrong and you're really upset, because that happens in life a lot. You know, something just does not go the way you want it to. I want you just to put it down, put your paintbrush down, or put whatever you're doing down and take a breath. And I want you to remember, you got this. You are smart and you are capable to figure it out. You might not figure it out at that exact moment because you're upset but you're gonna think about it and come back, just like painting. And when we make mistakes painting, instead of saying, I can't do it, because you know what, when we say I can't, that's kind of telling our brain that we can't, but we can do anything. So I want you to say to yourself, I can do it. And here's some questions. What's wrong? What's bothering me? Okay. 
that's what's bothering me. What do I do to fix it? What choices, like for a painting, is it the color that's bothering me? Do I need to go and change something where I need to paint over it and try again? Because that's what it's about is trying until we get it perfect. So I always kind of say painting's kind of like the other things we find in life that might bother us. You take a deep breath, you leave it for a minute, but I'm going to show you something. This circle, I am not going to put a color in. So I decided to paint around it, but look, what happens if I do this? I'm still going to be able to put that spot in. I'm just going to have to do it a little differently. That's all. So just because it doesn't go according to plan doesn't mean we give up because we're capable. Okay, here we go. I love the color orange. It's fun. I do like yellow more. Let me know what your favorite color is. Maybe do one of the cats in your favorite color. That would be kind of cool. And the nice thing is, is when we do our paintings, I want you to start to realize what colors kind of work together. Some colors look really good together and some you might look and go, that just does not look right. And we're gonna talk about that one day, is how colors work together and how colors can make you feel. Like on days like this, where it's a little dark and dreary, I need some bright colors. That makes me feel better. But some people, they like darker colors, you know? And it's like where we are that day to what kind of color kind of grab, we gravitate towards. And sometimes we might not even notice. Okay. So I'm going here. I'm actually going over these spots. Do you see how difficult this would be to kind of go around all of them because they're small? But we're just going to cheat. And we're going to put that tail in and we're going to come back because I can see where it is. And if I can't see, that's okay. Then I make it up. I can always draw over top. And today it's kind of nice working on paper. I like changing it up once in a while. You could put this in a frame. Maybe your parents have a frame laying around and you could go get it and put your pictures in there. You could change them out every week or two if you do everything on paper. But I do like canvases too. Those are pretty wonderful. Okay. I'm going to let this dry. So we're done with the orange for a bit because we're going to come back to that because I want it to be all dry before I put in the lighter one, especially because we're painting over top. So we don't want to go in with a on wet paint. There is times that you will want to do that, but I'll explain that later. You don't when you want it to be nice, crisp line difference. So what we're going to do now is I am going to make my other cat yellow. And I'm just going to paint over the details like we were saying, because we're trying both today. Step out of our comfort zones. We can do it. I believe in you. Perfect. These cats cute. When I was a little girl, we used to have a yellow and orange cat. And his name was Punch. He was pretty amazing. Okay, let's go into this. And I want you to know too, is there's always two videos every week. There's one for the smaller kids, but you're gonna learn stuff from that too. So if you get bored in the week and you've already done this lesson and you don't wanna do it again, you know what, we change it up a little bit. I try to keep it kind of the same ideas, but we're just doing one cat. And I think I'm gonna maybe do a different kind of background with that one. So if you get bored, just turn it on again. You've got these videos for a reason. And you're not, and there's nothing to do, and we're bored. It'll be fun to do some art. And this just gives you ideas. If all of a sudden you do this and you're like, you know what? I think I could try color value on something else. 
I could try color value on like the buildings we did last time. So you can go back and then think about what we're talking about today, color value and how you can change your buildings just based on lightening your color. Because now, I know I kind of explained it a bit, but I explained it a bit more today. Okay. Next, I'm gonna go into the sun. Okay, so I'm gonna let you guys go for a couple minutes while I finish this one up. I want to show you, I'm going to come back and we're going to do the details with the lighter values, but I'm going to go in and I'm going to finish my sun. Just like I told you last time is like a coloring book. I just fill it in and I'm going to fill in the back with some really light blue. So when you have blue, you can add white to it to make it light. I'm going to go through that and I'm going to be back in just a moment. So we're back. So I've been painting away the cats, but I wanted to explain on a painting I've been working on this week about color value in paintings. I want you to look at the grass. I have dark green, a lighter green, and even a lighter green, and it helps it so it doesn't look so flat. And the same thing I did for the trunk of the tree. I have a lighter brown, a darker brown, and same with all the leaves have three different greens in them and the sky has got blue, but all just different values of it. So you can look at different paintings and see like when you ch can change the value, you give it some kind of life, it moves. So I'm here now, I got the blue sky in and I wanted to bring up too is if you use paper and tape it you might notice just like me there's a little tiny bit of bubbling because the paper dries at different consistency like at, at different rates and it ends up starts to curl and move that's why we tape so if it's really bubbly at the end you can ask your parents to get a little bit of a water sp a spray bottle flip your painting around so it's the back, spritz it, and put it between some maybe parchment paper and some heavy books, and it's going to dry flat. So you can try that. That usually works when that happens. Kind of depends on the paper you use and how, how wet different parts of it get and, and how it dries. Okay. So what we're gonna do now is I'm gonna start working on where I'm changing the value of my color. So I've taken orange. So the orange we used on the cat, I have used white to make a very, very light orange. So I'm gonna go in and I'm gonna add really light orange spots to our cat. And the nice thing is, if you um, remember the painting I just showed you, how I changed up the color. So there could be really dark color in the sky and I wait for that to dry. And on top of that, I'm gonna put light. So you can kind of see the, the color underneath a little bit and it, it just gets gives it some more life to it. It doesn't look like just a flat color. Okay, so we're gonna go in, do all these spots. I'm gonna let that wait for just a second. We're going to look at this cat. So with this cat, I would like to change the value of the yellow to be lighter. So we know what to do. We wanna take our yellow and add it to the white and add a whole bunch of white to it. Not quite light. We're gonna use these colors in a little bit too, not just, not just for the stripes and the spots. And we're gonna have to go in and do kind of some color on the, the collars too. I'm not quite sure what we're gonna do there yet. 
work up to that. Okay, so right now I'm going to go in and I'm just going to change, I'm just going to work on the spots and the stripes and I'm going to be right back. Okay, we're back. We're almost done. So we're going to add some detail and some fun to this painting. So what I'm going to do is I like the blue, but it's really a flat kind of blue. So I, you can either take a really light, light, light blue, like lighten it as much as you possibly can. Or like me, I've got a little bit of white on a big brush and you can use a little brush too. It's just different effects, right? And we're going to look at what kind of different effects we can have. So I'm not actually painting clouds like I did last time, but I'm going in and I'm just changing some colors. So I'm just going in with my brush and like, where would I like some different color variations? You know, because they're not extremely different, these colors. They're just a little different because I'm adding maybe, maybe I'll add just a touch of blue to that. Not much, it's still pretty white, but okay. But I just want it to be more interesting to the eye. I don't want it to look flat. And if you can tell when, and I'm sure it is with yours too, when you go and you put a bunch of paint down and you're changing the value a bit, some, some places look a little washed out and some places look stronger. I kind of like those little places in a painting. I find it very interesting looking. So just kind of go in and do like blocks of like white or light blue. You could even do a dark blue, see what happens or do a fun color. And it just kind of adds interest. It doesn't make it so flat and boring. Perfect. We're getting there. And then if you like, if all of a sudden it's too much, what you can do is add a little bit of water to it. So I'm going to show you. And I take a little bit of a paper towel and I put it on my finger like this. And you can kind of do this. You can blend it in a little bit. Just make sure it's wet because if it's dry, it's not going to do anything. Okay, so the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go in with, this is fun. I'm going to go in with my fun colors that I did my cats in. So I'm going to take some orange and I'm going to make it lighter. Kind of like my spot colors, maybe a little darker than that. And I'm just going to go in and I'm going to just add some color to the painting. Just wherever I feel like it. You know what? I like sometimes just playing with shapes too. Like look, if I can do a little wavy shape coming from the sun. Or if I can do a square. And I use sometimes different ways. My brush, if I do it this way, is nice and flat. Or I can do this and that's a thinner line. So I like to just change everything up. I don't like it to always be the same. So just go in and have fun. Don't overthink it. I have a little bit of dark blue. Let's do that. That might be lots of fun. So let's go in and go in and just add some little colors. Just little shapes here and there. Just makes it kind of more interesting. Not so flat. So your eye kind of bounces around your painting. Perfect. I'm going to add a little bit more blue over here. I try, when I do kind of pops of interest, I try to kind of balance them out. So if I have them over here, I'm going to try to maybe do a little over here. So see how the cat is orange? I balanced it with some orange here. This cat is yellow, so I'm going to take some yellow here. And you'll find that it just balances your eye. So what that does is it takes your eye from one piece to the next. So you're really not sure what's going on. It looks nice. And when it looks nice, it usually just means that your eye is traveling throughout the picture. So that's, we're kind of like doing a trick. See the yellow cat and how it's kind of like yellow and orange? 
and bring some of the yellow over here. Perfecto. I think that looks really cute. I'm going to do some shapes. A square. What else can we think of? Rectangle. All sorts of things. And then what I'm going to do after that is you can use your paint, but I do love markers. Markers are so much fun to use on paintings. So I'm going to go in and I'm going to color different areas see what we can get. You know what? The black might be a little bit much. We might come back to that. I'm going to try red. I usually don't use red, but I think it's going to really make the cat pop. The orange one. Here we go. Just like this. I'm going to go right around the football shape. Around the ears. And you know what? I'm going to add some little you can always do this with paint, but you also can use different things like pencil crayons, crayons, markers. Sometimes I use charcoal on some of my paintings, which we'll get into another time. You can do lots of fun things. We're giving the cat some pizzazz. It's kind of boring before. Color. So I'm just adding outlines. You don't have to add outlines. Some people don't like them, but I do. I like, I find it, I can really intensify the colors that way when you separate them. Perfect. Well, it's hard sometimes when I'm trying to work with the camera and not get in the way, but make that work. Perfect. <laughs> Perfect. I just got what I said here. Okay, there we go. Go my way around. So I'm going to keep working on this cat, but I'm going to go to the next cat because I'm going to take a break again. I know it's going to be boring for you guys sometimes to look. Yellow and purple are sometimes a really fun combination to use. And I'm going to explain to you why in another video. But there's certain colors that can really intensify another color. Okay, you know what I'm going to do too? I'm going to go in with my cat's eyes. Oh my gosh, that's so cute. Okay, and I work down the neck in the stripes. And I'm going to work to outline and I'm going to outline the sun and I'm going to be back and we're going to talk some more. So we're back and I'd like to show you something. So I went and I did all the stripes. I kind of put just at the top of the eyes and just drew a little no a little mouth. But do you see how I used my purple on my cat and on my son, just like the yellow? So we're kind of missing a little bit of purple over here if we want to balance that out. Sometimes you don't want to, but it's good to know if that's happening with your painting and you don't like it, you can make it work. So I'm going to go over here and I'm going to do some purple polka dots. And then I might go in and see how I've got my little shapes. I might go in really lightly with my markers and work on some more shapes just to kind of add some fun. And I'm adding, and we all know I'm what I'm doing is I'm adding some purple. So it's bounce, bounce, bounce. And I want you to look here. Here's my orange. I got orange here and I've got some orange through here, but this is quite weak. So I feel like the orange is a lot. So I'm going to go in and I'm going to just do, let's do circles. Bubbles are fun. I put those in so many paintings. But people won't know why they feel like their eyes are bouncing, but you will know. It makes it a little bit better. But see, now I'm thinking that we need a little bit of orange up here. 
And just because I think that doesn't mean that needs to be the way for your painting. But I think I'm really happy with this. I'm just going to do a little bit there. And this is the painting from today. So please send me a picture of yours. I'd love to see it. I'll see you next time.